It was nice to have just a little bit of moisture hitting the ground. It's amazing to see the colors beginning to form on the, uh, on the trees. And it is a good day to come and worship God. Our call to worship this morning comes from Luke chapter 6, verse 35. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Let's lift our voices as we sing our first song this morning. with mine as we pray this morning. O oh God, that we may receive your blessing, touch our brows, touch our heads, and do not look upon us in anger. In a hard year, offer us mercy. In a year of affliction, offer us kindness. Dark spirits banish from us, bright spirits bring close to us. Great spirits put away from us, good spirits draw near to us. When we are afraid, offer us courage. When we are ashamed, be our true face. Be over us like a blanket, be under us like a bed of herbs. Amen. And with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray as Christ taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
thank everyone who has continued to support Hope United Methodist Church and its ministries. We ask those of you who are here to please leave your offering in the plate at the back of the church. For those of you who are watching online, if you would mail your offering in to the address shown, or uh, if you bring it to the church, slide it under the office door. Thank you. in every day and in every way. We pray, O oh God, that today, in the midst of all that is happening in our world, your presence would be felt especially clear. We pray for a nation that is continuing to be divided in more directions than we know how to count. But in most highlights at this time, we pray, O oh God, for the divisions of racism and politics. We pray, O oh God, in these days, for your abiding presence in your church, that as it continues to minister and be your hands and feet in the world, that it may truly remember that we are ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven rather than members of the world. We lift up today those that we care deeply for. We pray for our teachers and our students as they continue to go through school in new and challenging and difficult ways. We pray for George. We pray for Bonnie. We pray for friends and families in the north and south and east and west who are facing a multitude of natural disasters from floods to droughts to wildfires. We pray, O oh God, for our community here that your presence would change lives that the work of your church would be a witness to your love and faithfulness. And we pray especially, O oh God, that we may not ever lose sight, that we are your beloved children of God. Amen. Our focus scripture today comes from Genesis, starting in chapter 37, finishing in chapter 50, selected verses... Uh, so yes, we are jumping around a little bit. Sometimes it may seem like there's a, a definite gap. Please bear with us. Watch the screen or read along in your own Bible. I am reading from the message. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children because he was the son of his old age. And he had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Once Joseph had a dream, and when, told it to his, when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, Listen to this dream that I dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright. 
Then your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. His brothers said to him, Are you indeed to reign over us? Are you indeed to have dominion over us? So they hated him even more because of his dreams and his words. Jumping ahead. The man said, They have gone away, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now. Let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits, and then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we will see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood. Throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, so that Reuben might later rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the pit and saw that Joseph was not in the pit, he tore his clothes. He returned to his brothers and said, The boy is gone, and I, where can I turn? Then they took Joseph's robe, slaughtered a goat, and dipped the robe in the blood. They had the long robe with sleeves taken to their father, and they said, This we have found. See now whether it is your son's robe or not. Joseph recognized it, or not Joseph. <laughs> he recognized it and said, It is my son's robe. A wild animal has devoured him. Joseph is without a doubt torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his garments and put sackcloth on his loins and mourned for his son many days. Realizing that their father was dead, who jumped ahead again. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brother said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong we did him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Jealousy, anger, hatred, forgiveness, These three first words are, are quite prevalent in society, even in our own lives, each and every day. It isn't something we necessarily want to acknowledge, but it's definitely there. Uh, we see it daily in the news, online, in the streets. Everywhere we go, we can hear grumblings and mumblings of jealousy, anger, and yes, hatred. Our Bible story is one that is typical in some ways of any kind of sibling relationship. There is always a sense of underlying frustration with our brothers and sisters because we all feel that mom and dad somehow treat the rest of them better than us. After all, I was the one that wanted fill in the blank, but Johnny got it. Don't believe me? I'm a firstborn child. 
I know the frustrations of being first born. I had to wait until I was 11 to shoot my dad's gun. I had to wait until I was 13 to be allowed to drive the tractor. I had to wait until I was 15 to drive the truck around the farm to do different things. The day after I got to do each of those, guess who else did? Each of my siblings. How fair is that? And all that did was make me angry and frustrated and jealous and to maybe some small degree, maybe I did hate my brothers and sister for getting what I had to wait for. It was not fair. But you know, folks, those stories can go lots of directions. I, for myself, have to admit that there were lots of things that I had to work hard at. I was not a natural athlete. I was not a natural a lot of things, like mechanic. I can do music. But the one instrument that I wanted to play more than any other was the trumpet, and no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't make a sound on that instrument. My brother picked it up and could play it like it was nothing. Unfair. My siblings, on the other hand, found that my ability to do academics was something that was frustrating for them because they were constantly by their teachers compared to me. Why can't you be like your brother? He didn't goof off in class. Why can't you be like your brother? He was good at math. Why do you have to be like this? Your brother didn't have these problems. See, it goes lots of directions, doesn't it? And like typical kids growing up, we would have those moments where we would push and shove, you know, the wrestling match in the living room, except it wasn't the living room in our house, it was the dining room. There was no room in the living room. And my parents' front door on the old house was a big glass door, old wooden, with single pane glass in it. And there was a big sheet of glass about yay wide, and it was about five foot in length. And we would, on different occasions, wrestle in the, the uh, dining room, and inevitably, somebody's rear end would get shoved through that glass, and we'd have to replace it. Now, my dad would occasionally get in on this, and so a couple of weeks before the last time that glass got broke, my dad was the one responsible. And then we watched him fix it. About a week later, my brother and I decided to get into a tussle, and his rear end went through the glass, and we got into my parents' uh, little car. We drove down to the Agway. We ordered the glass. They cut it for us. We got home. We were puttying it into place, putting the last little pieces of nail in place to hold it there when my dad pulled in the driveway and said, what did you? Why am I sharing these stories? Let's look at the story of Joseph and his brothers. They become angry at him because dad showed favoritism. He got all the things they wanted but weren't allowed to have. They got angry and jealous at him because he had dreams that put them in a light they didn't like. I'm the eldest. How dare you think you get to tell me what to do? <laughs> Wait a minute. Just because you've got these neat dreams, you think we have to listen to your stories? But folks, there's a word in all of this that is the most dangerous, I believe, of any, and it is the word hate. Hatred. Because when you reach that point, you truly no longer care whether that person lives or dies. In fact, you would be even happier if that person no longer existed. They became so jealous and so angry at their brother, they were willing to kill him. I don't ever remember wanting to kill my siblings. Wanting them gone somewhere else? Sure. Grandma and Grandpa can take them. <laughs> they reached a point where they were so angry and so desiring to get rid of him that they sold him. And then tried to hide it. Tried to make up a story that the damage done by them was caused by some wild animal. 
that the tearing apart of the family wasn't their fault. That the destruction of all that held them together, their father's well-being, mental, emotional, no longer mattered. We don't see these issues in the world today, do we? You've all got a chuckle going on. We still today struggle with loving our brothers and sisters because we are jealous. We become angry. And yes, we do still hate others. And this, folks, is the biggest problem that we as a fallen race, a fallen people, because in Adam and Eve's fall from the perfect utopia, their sin caused us to find enough differences in one another that we became jealous, angry, and hateful. Willing to sell brothers and sisters into slavery. Willing to destroy them in genocide. Willing to get rid of folks just to make sure that they weren't anywhere near us. But folks, the underlying issue is fear. We are afraid. We are afraid that someone will take what we have and somehow we think we deserve it more than others. So how do we get to that last word? That word of forgiveness. Because forgiveness isn't something that we can force. It doesn't mean anything if it's forced. It's not real. See, forgiveness means that we have to reach a point where we care about the other person again. Uh, that the person that we have done wrong to will care enough about us to overcome the past. Joseph's brothers, as they have managed to get rid of him, do not know all that has happened to Joseph in the meantime from the time they got rid of him until they met him again. And once they realized what was going on, here's the great thing. They lied to try and get his forgiveness, something he had already decided to give them without their knowledge. We could have continued down the path of jealousy and anger and hatred. They could have chosen to completely destroy the family. Joseph had the power and the authority to do so. We don't want to think about the fact that the past has an impact on us today. We don't want to acknowledge that there is definitely still divisions based on the history of us as human beings that impacts the world today. We don't want to admit it, but it's true. There is still an underlying issue in India that whites are somehow superior to brown persons, and it is in evidence in the way the brown persons even speak about themselves. It's in evidence that when I would go into a restaurant there, families would be removed from a table so that I got it. Our own country and the other countries in the world that has, have and still have human trafficking going on still wrestle with the history of human trafficking. We may not want to acknowledge it, but it still exists. Why else would we be such a divided world if it weren't for the fact that we still fear those that look different from us. We still fear what the past is doing to us today. And we hope that laws will fix it. But the truth is, laws don't always get obeyed, do they? After all, the speed limit out here is 55. 
This is a challenging subject to speak about because jealousy, anger, and hatred are so prevalent in the world and we like these feelings to a small degree because they get our adrenaline running and it makes us feel strong. It makes us feel powerful. And then when all of that adrenaline is gone, we realize the damage that we've done and we're left in the wake of it and forgiveness is what we need, but we are afraid to ask for it. We can't lie to receive true forgiveness. I had to acknowledge in India that my skin gave me rights to things that I didn't deserve. I have friends that have had to acknowledge that because they were born within a particular social strata gave them avenues of life in their country that they would not have otherwise had and they did nothing to have earned it. Forgiveness means acknowledging that we need to care for one another. Yes, there is damage that's been done in the past and there is damage still being done today to brothers and sisters, white, brown, yellow, and every other color that may possibly exist because we are afraid. My question though, do you love? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that all those who had turned away from God's perfect plan might be saved. Do you love? Can we be forgiven? Can we forgive? Every one of us has been on the receiving end of jealousy, anger, and quite possibly hatred. And every one of us, at one time or another, has felt these emotions of jealousy, anger, and hatred. My question is, do we feel love and do we have forgiveness? In Jesus, the answer is yes. Amen. Let's lift our voices as we sing our closing song. Oh
for those who are in Jesus Christ, know that you are forgiven. For those who are not yet willing to accept that forgiveness, may God work in your life so that your heart may be softened to receive that love. And for those who have been so hurt, may you find it within your heart through God's grace to love us enough to forgive us, for we are sorry. Amen. Amen.